Riley was best suited for the role. And now today the company is continuing to do well. So I sold the company, I was done. That was, I sold it at the end of 2017, in the middle of a campaign. So if I had not won an election in May of 2018, I don't know what I'd be doing. Adjunct teaching at here, I don't know. Do something to try to make money. But uh, I ended up winning. And we, are, we won by the largest margin of victory in a Sioux Falls mayoral race. Overwhelmingly won. And it sent a very strong message to me personally. It was very reassuring that the city of Sioux Falls was ready to embrace the next generation of leadership, a new young leader. A 40, at that time, 40-year-old guy with three young kids who has no public service experience, who's just kind of an ex-marketing walk. And so that was in May, and uh, it's been nine months that I've been in office. So if you want to talk about a super non-traditional path to public service, that's how I got there. I am not doing this as a stepping stone for something else. People ask me about running for other offices. or My heart is in Sioux Falls, man. Sioux Falls is an incredible city. I love it. And I think a lot of us, because we're so close to it, we don't realize what an amazing city that is. There's a reason Sioux Falls is consistently listed as best place to retire, best place to start a business, uh, you know, one of the most affordable living cities. You know, we, do, we have so many great things in Sioux Falls. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to talk about a few of those, uh, and then I'm going to uh, close with a couple things, and then I'm going to open up some questions. So I'll tell you what, if any of you guys have an itch to ever be a public service, or serve your city or your country in any way, I tell you what, it is an incredible honor, but it is super hard. Daily, you just get beat up over stuff. And it's a very challenging job. All you have to do is go look at my Twitter feed or Facebook page, or I mean, you, you can't do anything right. I went to Haiti two weeks ago and I was getting beat up because why are you in Haiti? You should be in Sioux Falls caring for the people of the city. You know, it's like you can't win. And it keeps a lot of good people out of office. And so that's one takeaway I want to give to you all today is we need good people to serve, to serve your city, to serve your country. And we need people who are uniters, not dividers. we got enough dividers. They're everywhere. We don't need trolls. We don't need negative people. We need positive people that want to work together and make change. I know that sounds super corny, but there's a huge hunger and an appetite for that in our country, in our state, in our cities for that sort of leadership. So, what I, a little bit about Sioux Falls, I surveyed the, we had 1,300 employees in Sioux Falls. Shortly after I took office, I surveyed the employees. And I asked them this question, I said, what do you feel is the most important issue facing our city? And you may think that's, okay, yeah, I surveyed his people. I can tell you, the mayor's office has never surveyed the employees asking them what they, typically it's an ivory tower approach. The administration sets the direction and then the staff carries it out. I realized I was just a recovering marketing guy and I needed the expertise of all these people to tell me where we were headed. And this is what they said. All of our employees said, these are the problems facing Sioux Falls. Managing infrastructure, that's your roads, that's your pipes, that's your storm sewer, uh, that's um, all the stuff that goes with utilities. Second thing was managing the growth. So as the city grows, Sioux Falls grows by about 4,000 people a year on average. Those aren't all doctors at Sanford. You get there's a lot of challenges with growth. Crime comes with growth. Narcotics comes with growth. There's challenges that Sioux Falls, being a very homogenous city historically, has a challenge dealing with diversity. I'm trying to figure that out. And then these two, crime and narcotics. So they kind of go together, right? This is both related to growing, growing, growing. And this is crap that kind of comes as you grow. Crime and narcotics. That's what the employees felt was most valuable. So then I asked them, Okay, if those are problems, what can I do for you that could help you do your job better to help us tackle those problems? 
And it's these two things. They need more staff, more people. And I'll tell you, every organization, if you ever survey employees in any company, they'll all think they need more staff. Second, though, is more training and development. Uh, it's very odd that I'm here today because this morning we kicked off a training program with the Beacom School of Business and the City of Sioux Falls, a leadership development program we're calling Onward. We partner with, with the Dean, Linda Halliburton, a bunch of your faculty to provide the great curriculum that you're getting from the, the faculty here. Um, we're signed up for as well to, uh, to create some leadership development opportunities for our team. And then the third one was how do we make a better city culture? <laughs> and then the last question, what do you want to see Sioux Falls be in the next four years? And this is just a tag cloud of what those 1,300 employees said. The, more, the bigger the word, the more often they, it appeared in their responses, and the big ones are grow, 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 grow. Even though they said the number one challenge is related to growth, it's causing them stress, it's causing strain, they need more staff, what do they still want to do? They want to grow. They want us to be prosperous. How encouraging is that? So what's happened is our city of Sioux Falls, we have developed a lot of what we call departmental BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. We've set some big goals. To me, a BHAG would have been to grow a $5 million company. Because I'd say, oh, that's never going to happen. It's a BHAG. Um, do an Ironman, run a marathon, whatever is a BHAG to you. It's something that you throw the buoy way out there because you don't think you can attain it, but it keeps you accountable. We've done a lot of those in our city. And from that, this is where Sioux Falls is headed over the next several years, this framework. Where we're focused on safety and health, housing, workforce, and engaging people. So real nerdy stuff. Let me get through this. Don't worry. We've got to invest sewer plants, for instance. we got to create public safety training centers. This is a $30 million project we have to do to train our fire and first responders and police to be able to deal with the crime and growth in Sioux Falls. Um, we have to look at what we're doing with innovation and technology. Um, next month we're rolling out an app that you'll be able to report a pothole via an app. As soon as you drive past it, you can just open the app, pull over the side of the road first. Uh, you can report the app, you can report a street light out, you can report a snow gate that got missed, you can report a trash can tipped over, it uses the GPS coordinates of your phone. So if you take a picture, hit submit, it goes to the right, it goes into a CRM ticketing system, and it goes to the right department in the city, and we get an answer. Um, Dean Venke talked about 5G. 5G uh, stands for fifth generation, f fifth generation of internet. Right now, your phones, sometimes you see the 4G in the upper corner, you run the fourth generation of, of wireless connectivity. 5G is going to be like nothing we experience. It's not just going to be a little bit better than 4G. Uh, 5G is about 100 times faster than 4G. So you'll be downloading a full-length <coughs> movie in two to three seconds. Uh, the latency, meaning how quick a tower responds to uh, the, the call, load time, stuff like that. Autonomous vehicles need very low latency. We were just talking about an idea of vehicles and transporting things. And in the next five to seven years, autonomous vehicles are going to be a real thing. All right? And with 5G, cars can be this far apart. With 4G, they have to be this far apart because that latency and that response time is so, so much slower. Even though, even though 4G is pretty, I mean, you can stream movies through 4G. 5G is incredibly fast. And there's going to be so much innovation that comes out of this. I can see the school having a 5G lab eventually with your own 5G network to just experiment on what can be done. The reason Sioux Falls is going to be one of the first mid-market municipalities in the country with 5G is, is a few reasons. One, I'm pushing it super hard because it's game changing, it's transformational. You as young people, you live on technology. And trust me, you want to be in a market with 5G. <coughs> but secondly, Senator John Thune, who chairs the Senate Science Transportation Commerce Committee, is from Sioux Falls. And so we have a huge competitive advantage in working with Senator Thune to bring this technology to Sioux Falls. And we have businesses that are looking to move to Sioux Falls. We have corporate headquarters that we've talked to. But they said, 
The only way we'll move Sioux Falls is if you have 5G or if you're actively working on a 5G platform. So it's a business development, economic development, workforce development thing. Um, I also have been honored to be part of a, a partnership with Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies and the Harvard Kennedy Business School where they picked 40 mayors from around the world to invest in their municipalities on helping solve big problems. And so we have an innovation team with, uh, with the Kennedy Business School and with Bloomberg that we're tackling public transit in Sioux Falls. And we're trying to make a big change in how we do public transit bus service in Sioux Falls. For those of you who are from Sioux Falls, you know the frustration with bus service. We've got 40 foot long buses and there's typically two people on them at a time. And the routes don't go where we need to go. President Gestring was just saying, can we get a route out by University Center? I mean, it's, it's a problem. And we're helping solve that. But the other big thing is, for people like you guys to want to come to Sioux Falls and put down roots and live in Sioux Falls, I need to do things, not just with technology, but I need to do things to make you want to come to Sioux Falls. I need to invest in quality of life things like our Premier Center campus, baseball stadiums, arenas, state theaters in downtown Sioux Falls, um, initiatives like that. Because we, with the culture, the arts, the entertainment in Sioux Falls has to be good to keep the next generation of workforce coming here. You don't want to move to a city or a municipality with a dead downtown, with a dead core. If a downtown is dead, it's kind of the heartbeat of the city. It tells you the rest of the city is probably slowly dying. If the core is vibrant, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, La Crosse even, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls, they got strong cores, that means they're a strong city. We also have uh, had six straight years of record building permit and growth in Sioux Falls. A lot of homes being built. We're almost at uh, $800 million in permit valuations. Um, a lot of growth happening on that front as well. But then also looking at things like this, art, uh, transportation, kids, uh, bringing art into our city hall and having our city hall be a uh, recurring and rotating gallery of local artists. Uh, I recently pushed to get e-bikes approved in Sioux Falls so we can take e-bikes on our bike trails. Um, we're not ready for scooters and lime scooters and all that stuff yet. Those have a lot of problems that are still need to be worked out. But looking at new technologies and transportation that we can bring in the city. Um, had a chance uh, a few months back, I went to a school kind of on a whim. I said, hey, if anybody has perfect attendance this year, you can have a pizza party with the mayor. And got back and then realized what I had just committed to. And so apparently their attendance is really good. So they're remembering that. And so, um, but having fun with kids and tying education and showing support for education, that's also something people want to look at in a municipality. So I want to, I want to tell you a story and then I'm going to uh, open up for some questions. I'll tell you a story about this guy because this guy represents Sioux Falls. This guy's name is Kent Benson. Uh, about five years ago, four years ago, excuse me, I'm getting gas at a gas station in Sioux Falls. And this guy comes up to me. And he's shaking like a leaf. And he says, sir, um, I could really uh, use a ride. I'm in a real pickle. And he was, he was just trembling. I said, all right, what's going on? He said, well, I'm trying to get to the Social Security Administration building because I got a check I got to get, but I tried to, I got on the one bus, took it to the three, now I'm right back here, I got to get there yet today. I'm really in a pickle. I'm just shaking. And I'm like, so you want a ride? And he said, I, would you? Oh, I mean a lot if you'd give me a ride. So I kind of sized him up and, you know, thought, okay, if we get in a fight, could I take this guy in my car? <laughs> so he got in my car, drove into the building, and we sat there, sat there with him for the whole afternoon. He thought I was just giving around. I'm like, no, that's all right, man. I'll hang out with you. So I called my office, cleared meetings, and I got to know this guy for the afternoon. I went to drop him off, and dropped him off at his, his he was renting a room in a kind of a really skeezy looking house. And I gave him my card and said, hey, here's my cell phone number. If you ever need anything, you give me a call. And shut the door. I'm like, what did I just do? I just gave him my cell phone. Why would I do that? And two hours later, I get a call. Hey, Paul, this is Kent. 
I'm not sure if you remember me. Like, yeah, we spent the whole day together. Like, <laughs> I remember you. He said, could you meet me tomorrow? I think you could really help me out with something. I'm like, can't. I spent all day together, but i, I got to get back there. He's like, Paul, I'll only take an hour. So I, I went the next morning to pick him up. There he is standing on his curb, trash bag with all his possessions in it, black eye. I'm like, oh, no. What happened, Ken? Oh, I got in a fight, and he kicked me out, and, and blah, blah, blah. So we went to the frying pan, got breakfast. It's where all big meetings happen, so we in the frying pan. <laughs> we got done with what he wanted to talk to me about. I said, where do I bring you, man? He's like, you know, um, I'll figure it out. You go, you're important. He's, he told me, you're important. You got things to do. You just, I'm like, I can't just leave you. So I called my office again. I said, I'm not coming in today. I got to deal with something. And I drove this dude all over the city trying to find a place. We went to every hotel that you would never want to visit in Sioux Falls. We went to the affordable housing places. Let's say affordable housing on the signs on 